Foles has the Eagles flying high. Four touchdown passes in his first start in for Carson Wentz. The Raiders. Raiders trying to get things going. Philly needs a win or a Vikings lost Saturday to clinch home field advantage throughout the NFC. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage. Press coverage now on NFL Live and this from the Florida Times Union. Uh, Jags head coach Doug Marone just called Jimmy Garoppolo, who they're playing for the San Francisco 49ers, the hottest quarterback in the league, to which Bortles replies, uh, Coach, you know we're on the same team, right? <laughs> Bortles, three straight games, multiple touchdowns, no interceptions for the first time in his career. Bortles playing very, very well, Doug Marone just saying. So here's a look at the AFC playoff picture. At the top, the Pats and Steelers have locked up their divisions. Jaguars have clinched a playoff berth. The Chiefs snagged a huge win last week over the Chargers, and they can control their own fate winning the West. And the chase for the wild card spot will be an interesting one to watch down the stretch, as right now the Bills are in it, but they play the Patriots this week. Bills have the longest active playoff drought in the NFL. As for the Steelers, they take on the Texans Christmas Day, one of two games on that day, trying to get past that tough loss. Sunday to the Patriots that likely cost them home field advantage. They'll be without wideout Antonio Brown, who suffered that lower leg calf injury in Sunday's game. Pittsburgh, though, confidence it can bounce back and move on. Here's Big Ben. The great and crazy thing about all that is it was last week, and we can move on now. Um, you know, we don't have to sit and dwell and have hindsight and 2020 vision. It wasn't a playoff game where we're having this final. Um, meetings and all that stuff. We get to move on and play another game this week. In general terms, how does that dialogue go, though, when you have to think of, you know, two, three plays ahead? Yeah, you know, you've got to have great communication um, from head coach to coordinator to quarterback to quarterback coach to line and then quarterback to all the players. So it's a, it's a great communication um, uh, environment and, and something that we, uh, we pride ourselves in. What was maybe lacking then on Sunday? I don't really remember, to tell you the truth, um, because it's so long ago now. AB's, you can't replace him with one man. Um, AB is not human, so we will we will have multiple guys trying to fill that spot. But I know we've got guys that are excited, willing um, to, to try and fill those shoes. And um, I think Justin's going to be one. I think Martavis will do some stuff. Juju, I mean, everyone really uh, is going to have to step their game up, and uh, that includes me too. I'm going to have to be better. A couple of things to get into there. First and foremost, you have to give Todd Haley a lot of credit. Losing Antonio, the offensive coordinator for the Steelers, losing Antonio Brown, yep. and really changing that game plan yep. completely yep. into a power running game, right? Yep. So that's the positive. However, the end of that game was crazy for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I, I understand it was murky and it was confusing, but at the end of the day, when he says, I don't remember, it was two days ago, <laughs> two and a half days ago, what went down. I, I, I go back to this and tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Let's flip it. Let's say the Patriots had scored that touchdown that was being reviewed. And as that review, which I think took over three minutes, three plus minutes, I have to believe that Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, and Tom Brady would have gotten together and said, okay, we think it's a touchdown, but we need to go through what happens if it isn't a touchdown. And it didn't seem like that happened thoroughly for the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Trey, we always talk about the game of football as what? Situational. Situational. Coach Belichick used to always tell us, more teams found ways to lose games than win games because in critical situations, you have to be prepared for whatever happens. And to hear, to hear that being said about, you know, my memory, you know, it's murky. What do you mean? This, this just happened like a couple of days ago. They're like, look, how could you be murky about that whole, that whole scenario? Hey, look. Like, listen, and, and Trey hit it, hit it right on the head. As the replay is going on, there should have been a huddle of everybody talking about, okay, if it doesn't go down like this, this is what our play call is going to be. This is what's going to happen. So everyone is on the same page. How can you not be, how can everyone not be on the same page in a critical situation like that? I just, it blows my mind. It does. And that's, uh, you know, but we, we don't know. Honestly, we don't. We really don't know what we what, don't. We don't know what was really going on in the huddle with Todd Haley and. and but I, and, I mean, to me, I watching the video. They didn't even huddle, huddle together. I mean, yeah, Ben was on the sidelines and people. Were, I mean, it, it just it seemed and, disorganized. And listen, and Ben is a guy to call a lot of his plays on the field at, at, at times when he gets certain looks at the same time. So it's it's sort of hard to understand. I understand when he said, "Look, I got amnesia." I, I totally forgot about that game. It's time to move on. And you have to do that. As a teammate, you have to do that. Now, look, you know, we, all, we all know he's lying. But I'm saying, but you have to move on from that. This is a veteran football team. 
This is a team across the board that understands what, what's in front of them. They were they were a, a dumb play by Ben Roethlisberger from winning that football game. Or at, at least, least sending it to overtime. At least sending it to overtime. Yeah. This team's going to be in it. They're going to see each other again. And I think, look, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that the Steelers have what it takes to make the, to win this football. Here's game. what I'm worried about with the Steelers. Mike Tomlin put a lot of energy into that game. He started a talking lot. about it three weeks like ahead of time. Like three weeks ahead of time. I mean, he, they vested a lot. And for you to lose, lose a game like that, we've seen it in sports before. These things can have a trickle-down effect. You lose your star wide receiver. Yep. You lose a tough game. How are you able to adjust moving forward? It is not going to be easy. Well, look, this has been the struggle for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, since Ben got there against Brady and the Patriots, I think they're now three and nine, including the postseason, when they play this particular team. And that's the thing they're going to have to get over going forward. As for the Patriots, they take on the Bills Sunday in Foxborough. And, of course, one of the big storylines surrounding this affair, well, whether or not Buffalo and their defense might retaliate against tight end Rob Gronkowski for his hit on the Bills rookie corner Tredavious White after the whistle had been blown and he had picked him off week 13. Here's Sean McDermott on what may come Sunday. You know, anytime we spend discussing that situation um, is, is wasted time and, and getting in our way of becoming a better football team. And, you know, we got a lot of respect for him as a player. He's certainly um, one of the best or certainly if not one of the best, the best that I've been around at the position in 20-plus years in the NFL. All right, look, the Bills have something to play for here. Yeah, right. So you, you ha I have to believe, and you guys have to yeah. believe, a retaliation can't be in part of their game plan, right? They have to, we got to beat these guys. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, you just hit it on the head. You have something to play for. You don't have time. It'd be one thing if it was like years past with Buffalo where, you know, you're already out of it, yeah. and then you might see something like this happen. But you're fighting for, uh, you're fighting for a wild card spot now. Like, you can't, there's no time for any type of foolishness where it could cost you the game. You got to be ready to go. I'm right on board with it. And, and another thing is, you're going to retaliate against Grant. Good luck with that one. Good luck. I'm serious. What's the retaliation going to be? He's a matchup nightmare. He is. He How are you catches. going to stop him? You're not going to stop him. He's going to make his plays. I think you, you can't worry about getting back. You got, like you said, you got to worry about winning this football game and getting into the playoffs. Don't worry about Gronk. Again, longest active playoff drought. And right now, they're in as the six. And if you want to get in, you got to beat that team. Yeah. Go through and the if you're going to do anything in the postseason, these are the teams you have to beat. Me. Focus on that. Nothing else. Uh, meanwhile, there was a report in the Boston Globe that Tom Brady's personal trainer, Tom, Alex Guerrero, uh, has had his sideline privileges revoked uh, due to a rift between Guerrero and head coach Bill Belichick. Guerrero is a close friend of Tom Brady and a business partner of him who helped launch the TB12 Center in 2013. Uh, Brady also credits him for his pliability that's uh, been able him to play so well at the age of 40 and got him back from that 2008 uh, ACL injury week one. Our Patriots reporter Mike Reese has more on this. Now, Mike, what more can you tell us on what might have happened here? Well, good afternoon, Trey. You know, the word rift is a little bit strong uh, from my understanding of it. You know, Alex Guerrero uh, is still in the Gillette Stadium facility. I saw him twice last week while I was in the locker room uh, interviewing players. I was out in Colorado uh, for the week with the team in November, and he was out there as well. So he still has access to the facility. But, Trey, uh, my understanding on this situation is it's what's more like a reset. Basically, Bill Belichick, at, at my observation of it, is that he's just trying to clarify, not necessarily to Tom Brady, but to the other players that are using Alex Guerrero uh, for additional personal training, if you will, um, and therapy, that, look, when you're in the facility, it's our strength and conditioning staff. It's, it's our medical staff that sort of you want to take your cue from. And if you want to do any extra work outside that with Alex Guerrero, they're encouraged to do that, but in addition to what they would be getting in the facility. And this maybe cleans that up a little bit from Bill Belichick's perspective. And, Mike, just to be clear, it's not just sideline privileges. Guerrero was flying on the team plane and all those things. Those other things have also been rescinded, correct? Well, that's according to the Boston Globe report, and, and there's no reason to believe that isn't true, Trey. But I would say this. He wasn't always at every game. I mean, there were games I can remember he wasn't there. But, you know, he was on the sideline, but now, obviously, that has been taken away from him, according to that Boston Globe report.
Mike, thanks. And that would be in, in line with what everything we've heard from the Patriots under the Bill Belichick era. There's one voice, it's his, and he's going to stamp it going forward. Mike, we'll see what happens uh, this Sunday uh, against the Buffalo Bills at Foxborough. Thanks very much. Another helmet update for you on this edition of NFL Live. We have 11 down and 21 to go, and we will get through them all on this edition of NFL Live. When we return...